What is going on YouTube? <clears throat> so it's Friday. Um, came home from work. Nobody's home. And uh, you can see I went straight to the lab. Um, the only thing that I have not tested, well, there's a couple things I haven't tested, but I have not tested the salinity. But long story short, walked in the house. Since nobody's home, I went straight to the tank. Didn't have any kids to greet. My wife, they're all gone right now, so they'll be home in a little bit. So go over to the tank and I look at the tank. And the first thing that I see are two pieces of coral that have done fine and were doing fine yesterday. And all of a sudden, they look terrible. Matter of fact, one of them I'm sure is completely dead and the other one is on the verge of dying. So what I'm trying to do is pinpoint what's going on. I want to figure out, is it something that I've done? Have I changed anything? The answer to that is no. Um, <clears throat> so I'm just trying to simply figure out what exactly is happening with the tank. And to go over this real quick, I've tested uh, phosphates, alkalinity, uh, magnesium, and calcium. And we're gonna take the, uh, we're gonna start with the phosphates. And phosphates are at 0 0.04. And the last time that I checked phosphates was back uh, January 20th. So almost uh, give or take a month since I've tested phosphates, but they've always been generally pretty low, especially because of the algae scrubber. Uh, have not tested nitrates. That is my on my list of things to do, but my tank is always registered at zero. So we'll see. Magnesium. Now we're gonna take this with a grain of salt because I really am not very good at the Red Sea kit. I've been thinking about trying the Selford test kit on the magnesium and calcium. But we'll kind of see what happened. And so I tested magnesium with the Red Sea and the uh, result that I got was 1300, which in my belief is a pretty reasonable answer. As far as calcium, I got 390. As far as alkalinity, I got 7.4. And to give you an idea on the apex, my pH currently is um, eight and my pH it's pretty stable around that area as far as eight is concerned. I don't know if it's had any swings or not. So it has not. It's, it's, my pH has been on a constant up and down, um, just like any pH, but it's been, it's been normal. So the problem that I've been running into is I am doing the Tropic Moran balling method and I'm dosing about six milliliters a day and it should keep my, my, my uh, elements stable, especially alkalinity, but it's not. Um, my alkalinity is at 7.4. I would like for it to be higher, obviously. I would like for it to be in the 8.8 eight range, to 8 to 9 for me specifically, just because it gives you that little bit of buffer zone. But since um, I'm not in that range and it's been it's been a trend. I mean, I've always been in the eight range until recently. So I've been at seven four pretty, pretty steadily for the last uh, month or so. And it really screwed me up whenever I didn't have the hand DKH checker because I wasn't able to check alkalinity. So I went a couple weeks without checking uh, alkalinity and then whenever I got it back, it was a little bit lower. So to kind of uh, remedy the situation, since I am using the Red Sea Coral Pro Salt, uh, we all know that it has elevated levels. Um, I decided I was gonna do some water changes. So to give you an idea, uh, I did a water change on February 7th, which was two nights ago, and my alkalinity went up to 7.7 .7 with that water change. So two days, and I'm now back to 7.4. I'm trying to order some bulk reef supply two parts so that I can raise the alkalinity. I really feel like the magnesium and the calcium being, the calcium being at uh, 390 and the magnesium being at um, uh, 1300 is a sufficient range. Uh, if I'm wrong, please correct me in the comment section below. Um, but I really wanna raise the alkalinity but I have no clue what's going on with these two pieces of coral. And it's kind of kind of got me concerned because I really don't want this to be a downward trend where all of a sudden corals are missing or, uh, excuse me, that's not the correct term. Corals are suffering. So, of course, I don't test certain elements as much as I should. 
I really don't ever test nitrates simply because again, they've always been zero. Uh, phosphates, I test every now and then, but again, with the algae turf scrubber running, it's been um, uh, perfect for me. So I really don't have to worry about that too much. I've cut down on the feeding since I've lost some fish. So I'm only feeding, I still, I'm still feeding twice a day with the pellets, except the Neptune auto feeder has been slid over to the minimal setting, so it's not getting um, a lot of pellets in the tank twice a day. And instead of feeding a frozen cube every day or every other day, I'm doing frozen cube every, I, I don't know, we'll say two or three times a week maybe. So every other day, every other two and a half days, something like that. So um, my alkalinity is definitely a concern of mine. And at 7.4, seven, seven, I understand I'm still in the, what would we call the acceptable range, but of course I would like to be higher. So let's move over to the tank. Let me show you the pieces of coral that I'm talking about. Hopefully you can help me remedy this situation. The back left hand of the tank, you can see, these are actually two of the same pieces, except different frags. And the piece on the left has lost some skin and it's definitely gone. The piece on the right yesterday, uh, on Thursday, was, uh, excuse me, I've, I've got some sinus issues going on, so you made me hear me sniffling and whatnot, but the piece there on the right, the bigger piece, had great polyp extension, and all of a sudden, that polyp extension is gone, which really concerns me because I have no clue why. And if we look at the rest of the tank, of course, the hammers are doing all right. The green slimer there looks like it's doing just fine. The... Gonopora back there doing just fine. This acro looks like it's doing just fine. These, uh, this piece right here and this piece right here are finally starting to get some color in them. The bird's nest does look a little pale. So, uh, you know, as far as the SPS are concerned, they definitely do look like they are struggling. This was that big bird's nest colony that was up here and one of the hermits or whatever, I guess, knocked it down and it's now down, down here and you can see that, the, the ignore the middle section, it's been dead for quite some time. I've just kind of left it alone, but it, it looks, I guess, about normal for its current state, but this bird's nest, which has been doing quite well, is now showing some signs of stress. Um, I should say that the money cap does look good. It has gotten quite a bit bigger. Uh, this piece right here still has a little bit of polyp extension on it. And then I have another guy back here that still looks pretty good for the time being. So, really don't know what else to do because the only thing that I've changed on the tank is the flow. I did a video last week on how I have my gyre set and I did change my flow, but that Really, I don't think that that would change anything because it's just changing the direction. I didn't increase the flow by any means. It's that time again, folks. Get the booster pump running. Got about 80 PSI, close to it, 78 PSI. We're running through the Spectra Pure unit. This is how I do it, folks. So, I have a manual flush. That valve right there requires me to turn it to flush the... Uh, membrane. This is how I do it. I've got the cable running. I have it taped up so that I can uh, shut the door there and the kids won't pull it up. Run underneath the rug through the door. Underneath the football field. Go big blue. Matt. <clears throat> then you come up. We go into the containers. So I got about 15 gallons in the right container and my left container is empty. And as you can hear, I get a pretty good flow in the distance that I'm going. That's all the way to the bottom. So weekend's a perfect time fill up the roadie containers when they get empty. For those curious, my TDS coming in is 136. Line two is one. The output line, straight up zero. 
been a few weeks now since I've taken the algae scrubber off the tank. I don't know if you can see it very well, unfortunately, since I don't have a lot of room to work with. We'll just have to make do, but you can see it is pretty, pretty filthy. I mean, the screen's got some, some good go growth on it, and I'm actually kind of surprised because I've cut back on the uh, frozen food feeding just because I don't have a lot of fish anymore. So, do have a tail on the ground and a uh, <coughs> bucket. So, you can see there that my stand for the rain two is pretty generic. I've got a T that's uh, two inch and then it's got a half inch input. So that half inch input is run off the manifold, off the return pump, and then a piece of two inch PVC to set the base on too. So pretty, pretty simple. Um, <clears throat> so I just threw it in the bucket. I'm gonna go clean it. And uh, this is a new addition. Got the flipper nano on the sump. Um, I can clean the front glass with it. I can't clean the sides obviously because there's not enough room there, but uh, you know, I try to keep things pretty clean anyway. So what I do is uh, to clean like the, the side or over here or whatever, I just, I just take the uh, dry side off of it and uh, take the wet side and just scrape as much as I can. You know, I try to keep everything as tidy as I can. The one compartment that I have not touched is the return chamber. And you can see it's not too bad, but it could probably be a little bit cleaner, but that's okay. So cleaning this is relatively simple. We've seen me do it many, many times. Probably not gonna go through the whole process on this video, but again, I've got a lid here so I can contain some water. I've got a towel down, try to keep things nice and tidy. About 24 hours later, you can see the corals in the back there. The left one's still not doing great. The right one does look a lot a lot better so I don't know hard to say probably can't get a good view from the top of the tank but um, I'm gonna take the gyre the left gyre off of the tank you can see the right one sparkling clean the left one dirty so I'm gonna take it off the tank and get some vinegar and water down here drop it down there Get this thing cleaned up <clears throat> so since I got the gyre pumps off let me just look get some corals real quick get the shrimp now I'm not real sure about the bird's nest it does look a little pale but it just may be growth I'm not really sure so I'm very anxious to try to figure out what's going on Got the Ghanis back there stretched out. Got that green slimer there. It's doing some encrusting, doing well. Another small frag there. This guy's doing great on that plug. So anyway, let's get this pump off the tank. Get it cleaned up back on recently watched reef girls video and she was unable to take the grates off of the red sea reefer tank that she has so i actually was able to pull mine off uh, with a little bit more force than i wanted to use but i got all three of them off and since i'm soaking the gyre pump in vinegar and water already i just dropped them inside of there so of course my emergency drain it's completely submerged in water now. That's fine. It's gonna run like that for a short while. Get the grates cleaned, a little bit anyway. Throw them back on the tank. A little vinegar bath. Everything's back to normal. Got the purple off the left pump. It's gonna be hard to see, but you can see the grate right 
And if I can get my finger in the right place, right here is clean. <clears throat> Same thing with that grate and the one on the right. So basically I just pulled them off the tank and uh, dropped them in some vinegar water just to get them a little clean. Uh, thought they were gonna stand out a little bit more than that, but that's actually not too bad. Quick update, uh, it's now about 48 hours later and this thing has been just kind of sporadic. Uh, showing polyp extension and then not showing any polyp extension. Uh, again, right now it looks about like it did yesterday. So, um, you know, rather promising. Whereas its little brother over here is looking like it's about time for it to come out of the tank and go into the trash. But <clears throat> again, no rhyme or reason. Just kind of, excuse me there, kind of what what's going on over on this area, which you can see the area that's encrusting does have some polyp extension. So spent some time yesterday getting the glass nice and clean, um, used some glass cleaner, did actually spray up the Kessels with some air. <clears throat> so I used some glass cleaner on the exterior of the tank, used the flipper on the uh, inside of the tank and then of course got the new addition down in the sump to help kind of keep it cleaned up so use the flipper nano to get the sump area cleaned up a little bit the uh, skimmer foam is doing quite well and then there's the algae scrubber from where I cleaned it all in all, pretty successful weekend as far as uh, tank maintenance and just uh, you know taking care of the living inhabitants inside the tank. So as always, I do appreciate you stopping by. Be sure to check out the website pelfrey.net. Um, you can also check me out on Instagram at Pelfrey's Reef. Thanks for following along on this journey, and I'll catch you on the next one.